I bought a 2004 BMW 325Ci convertible, 5-speed with the sport package with only 64,000 miles. We'll talk about some of the pros and cons and my overall impressions. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Mike the Bald Adonis. I buy and sell cars as a hobby and I bring you guys along with me showing the pros and cons of each vehicle I buy. Now I am no stranger of BMWs. BMWs are one of my favorite cars. It's a love-hate relationship as any BMW enthusiast or owner or even past owners will tell you. They are a headache to own. Um, but with that said, if you take care of them, they will last for a very long time and you'll be very very happy with your vehicle. It's just that they are expensive to maintain. And sometimes, um, you know, it's just not worth fixing. So when you buy certain BMWs, you get a lot of flack or you get a lot of people that saying, oh, BMW sucked, this and that. Well, you know what? You got yourself a bad BMW because people that bought these cars new had money. These cars are expensive and to keep them up, or keep them maintained cost a lot of money. So when they get to a certain age, the younger kids or somebody that just barely makes enough money to make car payments buys a BMW, thinking that they have some class, but they can't afford to fix it. And then it goes to the next person and then the car gets worse and then, you know, the car becomes a headache. So anyways, when I seen this BMW pop up on Facebook, with 64,000 miles, white, with the tan interior, the black top. Right away, to spot a sport package on a 325, the usual cues are, one, if you're looking at the car outside, look at the wheels. See how the spoke wheels has a little middle indentation? That's a sport package wheel. BMW have many, many wheels with different packages, and then, Visually, on the interior, it's the sport seats. So there you go. It's a sport package. With the five-speed, it's more desirable versus automatic. People just prefer to drive a manual. So when I was reading the ad, 64,000 miles, five-speed, sport package, the car was incredible condition. Just looking at it, it was fantastic. The only thing that was a um, low point was the wheels, somebody tried to repaint them and the paint bled through. So it looks so, it, they look like they're dirty, but they're not. There's just a bad paint job. So that's the only letdown of the vehicle. The owner also spent $3,400 at Stratum BMW in New Hampshire. And unfortunately, people take their BMWs or Lexus or their Mercedes to a Mercedes dealer and they let them fix their cars only to, only to throw away thousands of dollars. For example, the valve cover gasket. They charged $780 to change a valve cover gasket on this 2004 BMW. Will you go to an independent shop? Somewhere else, have a friend do it because it's a simple job. It takes one hour to do. It, it costs about $80 for the valve cover gasket itself, and that's it. That's it, but they charge $780 at BMW. Uh, also, air intake, boot, they replaced that. I think they charged him another, I think it was, I, I don't remember, I don't have the paperwork on me, but it was expensive as well. The boot itself costs $34, and it takes less than an hour if you're good at doing that part because the boot is kind of a pain in the ass. You gotta go from underneath the car, on top of the car, try to get it, it's, it is a pain in the ass, but not what BMW charges. Anyways, um, when I get my cars, I always wash them and I detail them. On this one, it didn't need much. I did a quick wash, vacuumed it out, did the wheels, and I posted up on Craigslist. And um, I had several, several people, people from North Carolina. Yeah, I get people that come from Florida, they drive up. I actually had somebody drive, not drive up, fly up for a BMW 540 and drove the car back home. So that's not unusual for me that people come up and buy a car from me. But I don't like, I don't like that. I prefer people that live in the same area. I had a dealership in New Jersey. He was interested. 
Um, I had several friends that were interested, only to at the last moment say, no, my wife doesn't want to stick. I'm like, you know, so I, I, I had many, many people on this car, but the first person to see this car, her name is Jess and her boyfriend, Bose. Um, and I know when they came back with this stupid smile, I'm not, it's, I'm not being mean, but it's the, it's the big smile. She loved the car. And um, a few days later, she picked it up. She not only just picked it up, she came up, well, she didn't come up, Bose came up, and they're gonna tow it home because in Massachusetts, to register a car, you have to wait and get uh, an appointment. So they decided to tow the car home, and while Bose was waiting for the tow truck, I said, hey, listen, the only thing that this car really needs is a clay bar to get that dirt, that deep dirt off. Right? By looking at it, you can't tell, but by feeling the hood, you can feel there's a little bit of roughness. So me and Bose together knocked out that clay bar within like 20 minutes, and then I waxed the car, and all of a sudden, the tow truck came. So we were able to finish the job before the tow truck came. So the pros and cons, like I said in the beginning of the video, find yourself the nicest car possible because if you're gonna get a car that's been beat up, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's, it's not enjoyable to keep fixing these cars. There's just too many things that go wrong with them. So I do have a separate video on the E46. I'll link the description below so you can watch that video. Every nook and cranny that can go wrong, but I'll keep it nice and simple. Anything that has oil, going through it, like, um, or any gaskets, like for example, an oil pan, a uh, valve cover gasket. Anything that has an oil, oil related and has a gasket, that will go. Um, Vanos, that will go eventually, usually in the higher miles. Um, anything that has to do with the coolant system. The radiators are aluminum, but the ends are plastic and they just crack and they break off around 100,000 miles. Water pumps, they have a plastic impeller. You get the upgraded one that has a metal one, so that doesn't have a problem. Vacuum leaks. The car's getting older. You'll see check engine lights because there's a vacuum leak. Uh, the air intake, like the gentleman put in, um, those get rotted, and when you come up to a red light, it fluctuates. The RPM will start fluctuating up and down. Um, the suspension. Gubo or Guibo, whatever you want to call it. It's the drive shaft rubber piece that will deteriorate and it will start knocking, you know, just will start slopping around a little bit. Anything with the suspension, like I said, that has a piece of rubber will go. It's just costly. It can be. So if you're good with doing this stuff yourself or you know somebody that can help you out, buy a BMW. But if you have to take it to a repair shop, stay away from BMWs. It's that simple. Um, either you're a car enthusiast and you don't mind fixing it just because you love the car, fine. But if you're not a car enthusiast and you're getting yourself frustrated because you're spending thousands and thousands of dollars for the upkeep, it's just not worth it. So do not buy a BMW. Um, cons, that, those are the cons. Everything will go wrong with that. Um, the pros, outstanding handling. The motor is super smooth and silky. Transmissions has that nice notchy feeling, which is, it's pretty much bulletproof unless you don't know how to drive a stick. Um, the clutch is nice and light. It does not burn oil. The 330s do burn a little bit of oil, uh, but the 325 does not. Uh, the sport suspension, this, I think I already said that, the sport seats, that's a plus. That's the only re real reason why I buy these cars is because of the seats and the suspension. Um, but you know what? When you're driving it, you feel so good because it's a driving experience. It's you with the car. You just, I don't, I can't explain it, but over the years, I've owned close to 40 BMWs now. That's including 11 Mini Coopers. 11 uh, Mini Coopers are part of BMW and 11 Mini Coopers, just the first generation. So I want to thank Jess and Bose. Thank you very much for purchasing the vehicle and upcoming videos. I have almost no more car videos coming up only because I haven't bought any. I finished up the Mercedes CLA video. Uh, I have one more video with my 370Z. We just have to finish that up. It's almost done. I think that will be done this week. And I have upcoming travel videos that I gotta do. It's been so hot here in New England that I've just been miserable. And with my new drone, I'm still trying to get used to it. I have the follow me mode, which as you can see right now, going through all the branches, um, it's 
pretty fantastic, but there's a lot of different things that I have to get used to. So I have to practice a little bit more on them. So look for travel videos, more car videos, whatever I get to talk about, I will post it on my channel. So until the next video, everybody, bald on us out. Thank you.